Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Fat Daddy Eats, where we're going to be cooking today. What we're going to be cooking is a traditional southern dish, hamburger steaks and gravy. Can't afford a whole steak? Get you some hamburger, dress that stuff up, turn it into a hamburger steak, make a good onion gravy put over it, and have some mashed potatoes. So, without further ado, we're going to start getting into this. So here's the deal, with a big mixing bowl, I'm gonna put in, this is 80-20 ground beef, 80-20. I want it to have that fat content to cook down and make me some good grease for my gravy. Now I'm gonna kinda break that up a little bit, break it up where it'll take in all this dry stuff I'm fixing to add in there. I don't wanna do a whole bunch of smashing and mixing, I just kinda wanna break it up. Then, I'm going to add my spices. Now I've got an onion soup mix in here. I have a half a teaspoon of garlic powder in there. Some Montreal steak seasoning in there. That's, that's what I've got for my dry spice. So I'm going to just mix this all over there like that. Come so. I'm going to mix in about one of these ramekins full of breadcrumbs. To help firm these patties up and make sure they stick together. One egg and that's about an ounce and a half of Worcestershire sauce of your choice. Get me a spoon and I'm not really getting in and uh, mashing on my meat. I'm just mixing all this stuff up to where it mixes thoroughly throughout all that meat. So I've got it pretty well spread through there. Now while this is going on, I've got in my skillet over here, I've got some olive oil in the bottom so I don't build up a bunch of gratons right away. And it's on medium heat right now, getting preheated for me to form these patties up, put them in there. So that would be the next thing I'm showing you, us forming these bad boys up. We'll be right back. To form this stuff up, I like making my hamburger steaks in an oval shape where they look kind of steak shaped, huh? So I'm just mashing around, making the patties all about the same thickness. Look at that beautiful thing. Hmm? That's pretty. Put it right there on the butcher paper. Get in there and make my next one. Some folks like them bigger, some folks like them smaller. I'm just mixing them up. They'll be different sizes, different shapes, because every one of them is their own individual patty, huh? Hey, look. Ryan says I need to start saying this earlier in the video. If you like this, you really want to help the channel. If you mash that like button, it tells other people this is worth watching. And that really helps out this channel. So if you haven't uh, subscribed to me, feel free to do that as well. Turn on your notifications. Like this video. And we will have this done here shortly. This was two and a half pounds of that 80-20 ground beef, by the way. But I like making these things fairly big. Nothing like pressing out some hamburger steaks. Now, I don't know if you can see, but this skillet's pretty dang big. And I'm putting these on butcher paper. I got rolls of this butcher paper, so I'm putting them on the butcher paper before I put them in the heat. So, two and a half pounds, it looks like I'm going to have about mm, seven of these patties because I make them big. Now, these things being 80 20, they're fat. It's going to render down pretty good. Next time you see me, we'll be flipping these things. Fit all of them in there one time. My patty's in there. I'm going to let them get good and brown on each side, on that side before I flip them. I want to see them cooking through. I move my temp from medium to medium high, in between that high and that uh, medium. This stuff is smelling right. Oh, that's looking right. Now all I'm doing is browning these 
they're going to cook back into that gravy some more when we go into the next phase. So all I'm really doing is trying to get these things to brown up. I don't have to cook them all the way through because I don't know if y'all can't tell, but these are pretty thick. Now, another thing I got going on, while I've got these things browning and I'm getting that good fat in there to make my gravy, back here on this other burner, I have a pot of potatoes that I've cut up, cubed up peeled and cubed up. They're the red russets. I'm going to go ahead and turn on this uh, burner and get that thing going up and get my potatoes boiling for my mashed potatoes. Now what I'm going to do that I got them browned on both sides is I'm going to pull these things out and set them aside for now. Oh yeah, look at all that good grass on down there. We need that. Because the next thing, this is an onion gravy. So over here on the side, I have chopped up two small onions, or sliced up two small onions. And in there they go. I'm going to cook these down until they get close to clear. A little caramelized looking. Now that my onions are looking pretty much little caramelized, crispy edge, cooked down, pliant, movable. They aren't trying to hold that semi-round. I'm going to add my flour in here to make the base for my gravy. Now I had a friend, a good friend, who taught me to use what she called a gravy flour. And I got to tell you, it doesn't, it's not like all purpose, it's not going to lump up as bad. So what I'm doing is I'm cooking this flour into that hot grease and those onions, stirring it up. I want to make a good smooth gravy, but I want it to brown up some. So I've got to brown this flour. You say, Rob, that's a lot of flour. Yeah, well, it's a lot of, uh, a lot of gravy I'm making. I want to be able to float those hamburger steaks we made in a good gravy. I'm going to have to add a little of that broth in there now. So what I'm going to use now is I'm going to add a little beef broth in there. And it's still cooking right now. That gravy's still browning up. You hear that pop. Here comes some beef broth. Stir this in. There we go. Got me a nice golden gravy there. I saw a meme. The other day, it said, those folks that can cook a homemade gravy think they're better than everybody else. Most of us were like, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that I have the consistency I want in my gravy, it's time to taste it. It's going to be bland. I can tell you that now. Yep. So it needs salt and pepper. Ah, the heck with this. Let's get some of that. And now it's just a tasting contest. You add a little salt, you add a little pepper, you taste. You add a little salt, you add a little pepper, you taste. A little garlic powder. Can't go wrong adding garlic. Got my consistency the way I want it. Once I get my flavor the way I want it, I add my meat back in here. That's pretty dang good. And reintroduce my hamburger steaks. And cut this heat back to low or lower. I'm going to cover it and let them sit in there and soak up in that gravy. Cut it back to a low heat. And let's see where my universal lid is. Universal lid's the only thing that, and shoot, that doesn't even fit it. <laughs> well, just going to let it sit like that then. It's on low. It'd be all right.
so I realized I kind of glanced over that I had potatoes in this pot. Uh, this is just water and salt, and I cut up these potatoes. They're, they're red russets. So I cut them in, you know, quarters, chunks like that. And when they get fork tender, which fork tender means I can stick a fork in there and pull them out, or they'll break apart when I try to poke them with a fork. They're fork tender. At that point in time, I will uh, strain them in the sink through a colander, turn my heat off, come back over with the pot, and we'll be making the mashed potatoes. Potatoes back in the pot after I strained them out through that colander. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some butter, and I went ahead and cut that up into pats. Oh, you hear that beep, beep, beep? That's my milk. I want to warm that milk up. Now you can do this with a mixer, but if you want to be old school, check out this bad boy. This screams 1968 right here. This is old school mashing them taters. I got a stick of butter that was probably 14 or 15 of those little red russet potatoes. Or as they say in South Louisiana, pomme de terre. English translation, apple of the earth. Kind of got that mashed up. I need to put in some milk so I can get these smooth and creamy. So I'm putting in warm milk. I warmed it up in the microwave. It's not hot, but it's warm to make these good, creamy, smooth mashed potatoes. I'm telling you this old school masher is the way to go. This is the way potatoes were meant to be mashed by God Almighty himself. Oh, let me do it this way. See if y'all can see some of this. The only thing that we need to put in here for spice salt and pepper. Well, that's the only thing I'm going to put in there. Mmm. Pretty dang spot on right there. But I'm going to go ahead and add a little salt. I'm going to add a little pepper. Mmm. get some of that if you want to get real fancy you can throw some parsley or something like that on there I ain't that fancy dude my mouth is watering just wa just getting ready to eat this folks old school southern style hamburger steak and gravy with mashed potatoes and gravy you can't beat it if you've made it this far into the video, please make sure you mash that like and subscribe. Old school, southern style, hamburger steak and gravy, mashed potatoes and gravy. Can't get much more comfort food than that. If you've made it this far into the video, please do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe if you hadn't done so already. Come back next week. We'll have something else for y'all to look at. Thanks for another edition of y'all watching Fat Daddy Eats.